Now we're gonna go ahead and test this fields validator. It's pretty simple, but we're gonna jump into tests. And the first thing that I need to do is actually import the validation error itself. And so yet again, we are gonna be importing from django.core.exceptions. We're gonna import the validation error. And inside of our tests, so I'm gonna to go to the very bottom. We're gonna define the test unit measure validation. And we're really just testing for an error here. So first off, what I'll do is I'll just show you how to make sure that validators are being called. And that is, we're gonna go ahead and create our ingredient object. And we'll go ahead and call this recipe ingredient as we've seen, let's just copy and paste, make it faster. And then we'll go ahead and pass in our arguments. Notice I'm not using objects.create. I'm gonna go ahead and say new, or the name being new, the quantity being you know some arbitrary value, the recipe being, well, self.recipe A, one that I created somewhere up here, okay. And now to just verify that the validation's coming through, let's go ahead and add in our unit of something like Nada or Nanda or something that just definitely does not make sense. So what we can call is on this ingredient, we can call dot full underscore clean. So it's very similar to like when we have our form coming through in our form, we did form dot is valid, right? So that's on a view. This is very similar to that where it's gonna verify all of the fields are validated. So let's go ahead and test this now with python manage.py, test recipes, hit enter. And what we should see is a validation error here, right? And sure enough, I do. Okay, so that's good, right? We absolutely wanted to see that validation error. So to actually catch this and to make sure that we want this to be a validation error, so this is test unit measure validation error, we're going to go ahead and say invalid unit being, you know, nada. Okay. And of course we could have more than one unit. We could run this validation error over and over again for all kinds of invalid units. Uh, but what we'll do here is we'll say with self.assert raises and then our validation error class, because that's what we will raise no matter what. We're essentially raising that validation error. And so we're just checking that it's gonna raise that. That's it. And so now if I run it, it should actually work out okay, All right? And of course it is an invalid unit, but what if I actually used a valid unit and tried to do this as well? Let's take a look. And well, this time we got and the validation error was not raised, right? So this is actually a good way to test both of these things. I'm gonna grab this again and paste right above here. So this time, test validation, test measure validation, that's it. This time it doesn't need to be raised. We'll go ahead and tab this back. And as we saw before, this would raise an error. We don't have it to assert anything here in this case. And down here, we'll go ahead and give it another one. And we'll run it again. And this is just a simple, clean way to test those validations. Now we could always call the actual function itself, but I'm more concerned about how the field works than anything else. That's just a quick way to test those validations because they are pretty quick, critical for this. Now in the long run, we could consider adding a, another field for automated units, right? So like, let's say for instance, we have a parser or an API service that somebody could just put in the name of the ingredients, like 10 pounds of whatever. And the that parser or that API actually creates the quantity field and the unit field for us, which might actually cause a validation error. So that's not something I'm gonna worry about yet. So I might need to come back to this. I might need to add another field. But for now, I think this actually at least highlights that, yeah, we created a validator that works, or at least it seems like it works. Now we have a test that at least verifies in some sense that it, that it does work. So yeah, again, we could come in and have a loop here of some other ones. 
you know, we could even call it something like that. Actually, loop, I can't even imagine if loop is a pro full on loop. And so now I can say for unit in invalid units. Let's go ahead and rename that here. Uh, we just want to make sure that we have some sort of validation in here as well. So that would be another way to have more types of validation. It might take a little bit longer, uh, but if we were wanting to test multiple kinds of invalid units, uh, then we would. And even if we accidentally put like ounces in here, at some point it should raise a validation error. So even if we did have actual valid units. Now, another thing to think about in the long run when, when it comes to doing these kinds of tests is actually taking data, pre-existing data that may have caused server errors on you know, your actual production server and putting those things in to being tested against as well. Uh, so long-term thinking, we wanna have maybe more data for these kinds of tests and perhaps in a more persistent testing database. So things to think about, but now we can do those tests. Let's go ahead and keep going.